the next thing I want to talk about is my work on on uh, winning Fumina. She's practically done right here. There's winning Fumina. So let's get into that. So I've been working on this model the past few days and it's I've I've talked about this before but she's mostly just practice at this point like just practice in terms of of how it is putting together a, a model kit because it's been a very long time since I've put together like these you know mecha model kits let alone a mecha musume or like a girl pretty girl robot model I I've never built a model like that so um, yeah I've been slowly working away at this trying to sort of remember and what I've learned from YouTube and advice from from bacon and everyone else about how to put together models and using new tools that I've never really bothered using before like and bacon knows about all this like using things like clippers and sanding stuff I've never really bothered maybe when I when it comes to putting together Warhammer stuff sure but it's a little different it takes a little different mentality building these these kinds of models and again uh, the added component that this is supposed to be like a girl pretty girl model blah 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 just added an extra layer of difficulty for me but nevertheless we persevered and we've experimented with some uh, some techniques and we got to this point here she is and you know what she doesn't look too bad in this form in this like form where she doesn't have like all the armor and stuff she looks okay and I think the face is is okay but it's not great like compared to a lot of the the kits that you see today with like uh, from Kotobukiya or Bandai themselves with their 30 minute sisters line this is uh this is definitely something that came out many years before that and they were still just trying to come to terms with how to go about doing this but uh, overall it's not that bad it's not that bad there's her caboose <laughs> Um, and here I can show real quick. This is the uh, this is the little SD model. He's disassembled now because I'm he she because I'm currently uh, just about to paint uh, some extra parts because some of these parts are supposed to be stickers. Oops, is this upside down? Yeah, it is. Some of these parts are supposed to have stickers, but I don't really want to do that. I don't really want to use stickers, so. So we are going to use paint to fill in these parts. Just give me a second, guys, while I put this thing together for the purposes of showing off this model. Kind of goes something like that. It's a little, uh, it's a little loose there. Should be a little more com compact. Uh, there we go. I think something like that. And where's the other arm? Oh, over here. Pardon me. This is a pretty banging song. Is this uh? song is this? This is a... Oh, it's Cammy, of course. How could I forget? Oh, there you go. Bacon. Cammy theme. Super quick. Okay. So... This is like the little SD model that comes along with it. What is it called? Does it have a name? Well, um, all these parts disassemble and then attach themselves to uh, Fumina here, right? So like, for example, this, if you look at this on her shoulder, on, the, on this guy's shoulder, it's a foot like it's like high heels right 
and then this part here goes on the back and this uh, th the feet become sort of like back thrusters for her backpack the head itself is a kind of backpack that obviously goes on her back it, if you look closely it's a little hard to tell but it even has a bit of like a backpack school backpack design with like straps and a cute little design of a cat face there this part here is a uh, it's like her leg guard her sh yeah her shin guards so you can kind of see all these separate parts that would then attach to her to make it like a to make her more like a a battle ready version and you can actually see yeah it'll look kind of like that this this drawing actually makes it look really looks fine looks makes it look interesting the actual model itself once you put all of the stuff on i just find that it, it didn't look all too exciting and it looked it looked kind of it looked kind of flimsy and clunky like it would just fall apart real easily and i'm I'm tempted to sort of attach it all now and show you guys, but I think what I'll do is do that off screen and then maybe add a picture later of how that all looks. That'll be a little easier because it's just going to take a little time to kind of readjust and and uh, and attach everything on for very disappointing results. Because again, it just looks, it literally looks like a, like a doll, Barbie doll with a bunch of mecha stuff added onto it. And it doesn't feel like a very cohesive, coherent design and it just kind of falls off really easily but I mean just as this model it's pretty neat it looks fine um, the other thing that I'll mention though is that I've been sort of practicing with seam line removal and I do have some pictures that I'll again I could probably put up to show as an example but if you take this uh, torso part for example this is two parts two halves right and I just kind of use the method of like I don't know what they call it kind of like the beading effect using a Tamiya extra thin cement to kind of put in excess the glue on both sides of on both parts both sides the edges and then squeeze them together attach it and squeeze it together that like you know that the glue material starts to to bead out from the seam and instead of like you know my initial thought was to kind of smooth that out you sort of just let that extra material of the glue kind of stay or the cement rather um, you kind of let that stay in cure and what happens is it it sort of melts the plastic and then you can kind of go in with your grades your multiple grades going up from whatever 800 all the way to 2500 or 5000 5, which is what I did um, to kind of smooth it out and it's it's probably pretty it's probably hard to see I think I did a pretty decent job that you no longer see a seam line it would have been very it would have been very clear to see had I had I left it as it is and again the same goes for this side and also on the legs too this is this is where I uh, first started to practice with that and This, this seam here is visible. I think you guys can see it. This seam here is pretty visible because that is intended to kind of move and rotate. So I didn't want to glue that. This is intended to move and rotate. But the upper part of the thigh here, again, two separate pieces of plastic, which I then kind of effectively welded together and sanded to make it look as one. And and to look at it now in person, I can, I can see faintly the, faintly a bit of like, a difference like a thin line and again here but by and large it looks it looks pretty much like one solid piece and there's even like a second separate part here just slightly above the ankle and it's very noticeable uh, it's nor under normal circumstances it would have been very noticeable but yeah I just use the cement glue technique and kind of just blended it together making it kind of smooth out with the sanding and again that's something where I had to really kind of follow the contour of the of the shape of the part to kind of make it flow better because if I just concentrated here where the actual seam is then then I think that like there would have been kind of like a dip right 
in the plastic. So you kind of have to, you know, reprofile, I guess, the entire part to, to make it look good. And again, faintly, I can kind of see where the seam originally is right here. But, but if you're just looking at it real quick, I think, uh, I think it looks pretty fine here and there too. Here in the arm, I did not do that. I think I can, I think that this uh, shoulder part here, I can try to do some seam line removal as well. I think that might be the only part that I can do left. But what I would like to do for this last last sort of pr piece of practice is to do the um, the sprue goo or sprue glue method, which uh, which we had uh, someone in my chat discuss, as well as uh, Bacon has has uh, attempted it himself to some really nice results. Uh, so yes, that would be the last part of practice, I think, is to do that. And then this model will be largely done as far as assembly goes. Now, uh, as far as painting goes, I put on the stickers for the eyes because I didn't want to go and paint that myself, feeling lazy, I guess. But there are other parts that need to be that need to have stickers, which I will probably end up simply painting instead. So that includes the red central part of the V fin here. This little uh, little mouth part here is red, of course. Uh, on the chest, this is red. As far as panel lining goes, I'm not really sure if I want to do that. That might be something that I might practice another day. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I think it'll look better if I do panel line it, but I'm kind of feeling lazy <laughs> and I don't feel like doing that right now. Oh yeah, and back here, the, I think this the camera part should be green. So just little accents that I think will help help make this model look a little better. I do like this, how this thing looks, um, rather than, oh, here's the gun too, by the way. Rather than if it was attached to Fumina here. I kind of think this looks pretty fun. However, it is not very poseable. Like you can kind of move some things here and there, but like, for example, the, the wrists don't move, the legs move pretty okay. But this is mostly intended to be Kind of like a vessel, like a carrying thing, thing, uh, something to carry all her, all her armor parts, and it also ends up looking like a cool little SD guy. But it, as far as like posability and playability goes, this thing isn't incredibly posable. Not like it's not like I can move this guy's head like left and right. It's very simple, like how it's been attached on. And, and as far as like playing with this goes, like it's not something you'd really want to play with. Not that you'd normally want to play with any Gundam model kit, because it's, you know, they're more like model kits anyways, right? Um, Bacon, maybe just panel line the Gundam part? Yeah, I don't think Fumina needs any, no. She doesn't really need panel lining, however, just just right here down, down her, uh, her bikini top or whatever you want to call it, this should be black. And I think I'll, I can do that. That's not a big deal. And it, it'll look really good. Um, there's an example of it here somewhere. Yeah, you can kind of see in this example that the center part just has some black. And I think that looks really good. But as far as the rest, she doesn't really need panel lining. It's not like she has panel linings at all anyways, right? But yeah, not she, this model. It's... It, I've watched a number of reviews where they kind of poo-poo it. I don't think it's that bad. I think if you stick with the posing, her posing like very simple poses and nothing like like really exaggerated like running and stuff, it's mostly fine. She can't really, it doesn't really look all that great when you move her leg up all that high. And in fact, it's very easy for the leg to come off. It can't really orient itself all too high. And yeah, the general posability, it's its not all that flexible or posable. But uh, yeah, if you kind of stick to more simple poses, it's pretty okay. And yeah, so some panel lining on, on this guy, some simple stuff. And then we'll pretty be, much be done with this. But the last thing I want to talk about actually is that yesterday, as I was posing this model around, I had, I had a mishap. 
this so as I was saying I was um, doing seam line removal gluing gluing together this leg right but this this ball this ball joint part here was attached while I was gluing and I think it ended up getting glued stuck right without me actually noticing so yesterday I was posing this around and then kind of moving the foot to be kind of balanced in a wider stance and the foot just fell off and I looked inside the inside this leg part and the peg for the ball and joint was embedded into the into where it should be and I could tell that there was like glue residue just uh, that kind of fused it together and so by moving it around I wasn't it wasn't moving freely within that that socket instead it was I was essentially like twisting something that was glued off and it just fell off and I had a moment of despair I was like oh my gosh what am I gonna do what am I gonna do that sucks it's not like they come with extra parts right but uh, I recovered and I set about making and fixing it and what I used was this right here this is a uh, pin vise or a hand drill and you don't see it you can't see it right now but there's a uh, there's a number of, of drill parts here's one of them drill bits that you can then just screw into here I'm not gonna do it now but you just screw it in here and it locks into place this is a far too thick of a of a bit to use for what I had done. There's a, a much thinner one inside this kit, which is what I used. And you just sort of, I just sort of drill, drill, drilled into the hole, right, into this part, and sort of made sure it was lined up with the ball part that was now separated. And I drilled it, drilled the ball part too right and it doesn't even have to be particularly deep it doesn't have to be a very deep uh, a deep hole and I don't think I have an example of what I use to f to unite the pieces Oh, okay this is kind of an example it's kind of covered in glue right now but, but yeah this is just like a clothespin right this is just like a for sewing and stuff to keep your stitching or your if you're making like hemline adjustments uh, to kind of keep the new shape in place right but you take this metal bar right because it's the exact it's, it's close to the exact uh, diameter of the hole that I drilled and again I there's a very there's a much smaller drill bit that I used in here and you're just gonna sort of reinforce reinforce it right it's kind of like athletes get like metal bars <laughs> in their legs and in their arms and stuff wrestlers You're just gonna put that in there and you sort of cut it to size and you use super glue for this because um, using cement is kind of where using this cement glue is kind of where the problem started right but yeah super glue is Especially the super glue that I used, by the way, this one right here. Oh, also, um, cement glue won't work on metal, which is what this is, right? It's metal. Just use some of this. This is a new glue that we bought. I trap picked this up. It's actually like an accurate nozzle or something like that, and it actually worked pretty well. And yeah, just glued it in there, cut it down to size, and put it back. And now it's fine. I'm not gonna really try and. Uh, try and make this model like stretch and uh, and pose it in really crazy ways like I'm not really gonna exert more force on this leg because I know that it's it's a I had to do a repair job and I'm not interested in repairing it again right but for the most part it seems pretty good like like I can move it around and stuff it seems okay so and that's uh and it works pretty fine so yeah that's that's it for that 
both her and the model. And I'll I'll take some uh, I'll take some more pictures of of her with the armor on and and when I finally paint that I might again this is something that I'll do uh, today I'll just paint the rest of it just the little accent parts and some panel lining and then we'll be done I'll take some pictures and we'll be done with that and then what's next guys what's next well hmm I think what's next <laughs> is I, I I'll probably have a little diversion and work on this Oh, bacon. I should get one of those myself and super glue. Got to make sure she doesn't get Iversoned again. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Did Oh, did you Did you uh did you have any parts break on you? That's actually something I want to ask you about um regarding uh, my model and and they're both Kotopugia kits and I and I do remember like some of the people in your chat were kind of making sure that you were aware of of making the shoulder joints and the and the neck part connections like like shaving it like sanding it a bit so that it's not super tight that's something that I probably should should keep in mind for my model as well when I work on because uh, that would suck I really don't want to break apart but <laughs> it's possible because I mean there's they're kind of very delicate though and some parts are thin so I think it's possible that it might happen but yeah I, I I'll probably need your supervision when I, uh, you haven't had anything break yet? Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, I feel like, uh, it's possible for me. <laughs> but yeah, I think we'll take a little diversion the next time I, I build something on stream. We'll, uh, we'll work on this. Or maybe I'll start it off stream just for fun and then finish it off on stream. Uh, I don't really imagine this being particularly hard. We'll take a break with this. And then we'll, uh, we'll move on to our, our lady, uh, Ritsuka. And then, Looking forward to that. That should be pretty fun. And, uh, oh, you know what? Um, there's something else that I wanted to mention. Oh, bacon. The joints are kind of scary. Some do feel way too tight. Yeah, so they, so, I, uh, I wanted to talk about this before, but I got distracted or I forgot. But, yeah, I had seen on, um, on some, on some Reddits and some forums, people were saying, like, like, it can happen a lot, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, parts can break because of the joints and stuff. So they recommend sanding it a little bit to make it a little more smoother. But I'm also worried about sanding it too much, you know. But I guess I guess it's better to do a little a little sanding, and and you can always kind of go back and and add a bit more depth or width to the to the joint by like using super glue or something. You can kind of like or even paint for that matter. I've seen people use like nail polish. Uh, nail polish gloss to sort of add a thin layer of thickness and then you know if it ever gets thin if it ever sort of wears off you can reapply it but it's better that way than than having it too tight right yeah yeah but the other thing I wanted to mention was um, before we left on the weekend before we left uh, for the for the big city on the weekend we went to uh, our local antique store, and yeah, I would say that our antique our antique store here is actually surprisingly good. Like, it's got some pretty interesting stuff, and uh, you know, including a really really good transformer seller. Like, th there's this one guy that sells like amazing transformer action figures and stuff that was like imported from Japan, and he's like, you know, in the middle of this small town. It's very it's very funny to me, but. Uh, there's a bunch of other people that sell stuff there too and there's this one seller that sells like doll stuff <laughs> and I think you might know where I'm going with this like yeah they have this store that sells little teacups and chairs and like furniture blah 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 and I was looking at all of it <laughs> for the first time I knew that they had that stuff like because I've been to this antique store before but now I was actually looking at this stuff seriously. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, there wasn't anything indicating the scale, unfortunately. But I think that the scale of the stuff that they have there is probably uh, smaller than than what I would need. Because, for example, they had a, they had a pizza there, right? Uh, and if you imagine, maybe if you look at the diameter for this, this would probably be closer to the appropriate diameter of a pizza for the one in ten scale maybe something bigger actually 
right? But the one that they had at the store was much smaller than this. Like a far smaller radius, diameter. Much smaller, so it didn't seem like the appropriate scale, but it did look good. Like it was a sculpted pizza with a slice that you could take out, and even a box. Like a little uh, box that could go around it. But that being said, I feel like some items could probably still work, or maybe they have some different scales, so I could look a little closer now. I just was starting to suddenly feel very self-conscious about being a grown-ass man looking at dolls, <laughs> I guess. But uh, yeah, they had things like telephones and stuff, and I'll, I'll take a look another time and see what they have. I didn't get anything. I'll, I'll say that now. I didn't get anything yet. But one thing I did notice was that they had, um, they had like rugs, like carpets for dolls, right? And that's something that could be scale agnostic, if that's even a term. Like, that seems like a, something where, you know, the square, the rectangular shape of a, of a carpet, regardless of the size, it, it could possibly match different scales. You would just have to pretend in your mind that it's either a very large carpet or a very small one, depending on the size of your, uh, your dollies. <laughs> But yeah, I did see the carpets and some other stuff. So yeah, they had a lot of interesting doll things. And, and yeah, that's, that's what my life has come to at this point. I was, even at the, I was even at Walmart not too long ago. And I was looking at like, like uh, not Barbie stuff, but like other, other accessories. And I was like, ah, hmm, this might be a good scale. I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we got this one instead, the... We have this one, which is uh, still weird. It's still a weird thing to buy. I'll freely admit it's <laughs> it's a nostalgic soba noodle vending machine. But I think it might be fun to mess around with. <laughs> but yeah, so the backlog grows, and I've got a lot of stuff that I like to work on. You guys know all the stuff I've mentioned before, so I don't really have to go over it again. But, you know, it's fun. And I think the next time I stream, I'll probably uh, I'll probably do some Elden Ring. Maybe if uh, Bacon wants to do some um, some turtle turtle co-op, maybe uh, tomorrow or something, we can figure that out. That might be fun. And I also need to make some progress in my my own like non-turtle Ninja Turtle progress, which I need to do. And I'll probably play some later today. The other thing I wanted to mention, oh, for sure, cool, cool about this uh about this model actually is that the peg the peg so it comes with a stand this is it right here and for it to for it to stand it goes like that i can kind of turn it around but you get the general idea that it kind of pegs in there and i mean this thing isn't very posable anyways it doesn't look it's not very posable so i don't think there's much point in doing that now when fumina has all her armor on and you pose her with this, it, it does feel like the angle of this peg just doesn't really make for a natural kind of posing situation for her. It's very weird because in the pictures, uh, if you take a look at these pictures, I really like this pose. And I'm like, can I make this? And I tried, but yeah, it just didn't seem like it was actually possible given the, given the position of the peg hole in in her model as well as the position orientation of the of the stand here it doesn't seem to work that way so i think that this is a lie <laughs> in some respects unless i am just a big noob and i'm not fully understanding something um there might be ways to kind of adjust this using some of the other adapters that i have from from my base kits and stuff like that but uh yeah just another weird thing about this model, but I feel like uh, I feel like I liked I ended up liking it a whole lot more than than uh, than a lot of people have kind of uh, talked about it. But maybe that's because it's sort of my first Gundam model in a long while, so so I'm just kind of having fun at that basic level. But anyways, I think that's gonna do it for me, guys. I've been streaming for about two hours and forty six minutes. A lot of talking today. I did I did paint just this stuff here and uh we'll uh, we'll continue with that and it's actually really bothering me now that i look at it how how this is oriented sort of higher and then this is lower on the other side so i think 
I might just cover this up with uh, with white gesso paint and redo it because it's kind of bothering me now. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think that's going to do it for me. So yeah, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Thanks, Bacon, for coming in. And I'll catch you guys later. GG.